Hello everyone. So now we are slowly moving to uh, week number three. I know that you are now busy finishing your lab number one, that's for sure. And then at the same time, we are going to cover some new materials that will help you to move on with lab number three uh, in week number four. So let me just tell you uh, briefly what you're going to learn in the coming week and then the study materials you should really go over and then off you go, you will do the work. Uh, let me just give you a quick overview about week number three over here. Okay, as you can see from my iPad, first of all, I would like to draw your attention as I promised. I'm going to reduce the uh, workload for the coming uh, week three and possibly week four or week five. I'm not too sure yet, but at least for this week, rather than having three hours of lecture, you only need to watch for two hours. So that's one hour reduction from the previous one. I'll do another one hour reduction a little bit later. Uh, for, for this week, only two hours of lecture you have to study. However, these are very important topics. P please do not procrastinate. You want to finish them steadily. And uh, I'm going to talk about individual topics in just a moment. And uh, you can see the normal iPad notes and also lecture slides, the Google Doc for you to post questions. And also there will be one example code for you to actually uh, strengthen your ideas about what you learn in the lecture. Let me just go over very quickly with uh, number one, the learning objectives for, uh, for week number three. You're going to learn about generic class what a generic class really is. I'll give you some motivation about why you will need generic class. What if you don't really have generic class? What kind of uh, struggle uh, can you have? And we're going to talk about a lethal stack, last in first out, something you're very familiar with, and then we'll review what, what you learned from the previous week about how you can write complete contracts, especially post condition for, let's say, the push operation. Especially we talk about basically multiple possible implementations. So multiple possible implementation is really the key that we're going to focus this week because when you talk about design it should be like an open-ended problem which means there might be multiple solution that might solve the same problem so now if you got multiple problem uh, multiple solutions how can you choose between them and then once you choose uh go from one solution to another can you do it in such a way that it's not going to affect your potential clients? So that's the design problem we are talking about this week. Specifically, we talk about two very important and very fundamental design principles. One is called information hiding. The other one is called single choice principle. I wouldn't talk too much in this intro, but you will see exactly uh, how these two principles are defined and how our initial try for the stack specification will actually fail these two principles. And then we'll see how we can use the so-called math models which you have heard about since your since the beginning of the turn. So now you'll see how the math models can be used to actually solve uh, this design problems over here. We'll see. So you have to understand the whole storyline, uh, like how we discuss the issues. Okay, so now for math models, you're gonna learn about something called abstraction function. Basically think about abstraction function as one way to promote your implementation, possibly array or linked list, hash table, to a higher level in terms of the mathematical objects you learn in 1090. For example, how can you think of an array in terms of a function? How can you think of a linked list in terms of a mathematical sequence? So that's something you will have to learn uh, in this week. And once you know about how to define abstraction function, you have to write contracts uh, in terms of the math models. So that's something you will also have to learn and also how to check that contract at the runtime, you have to understand how things are done at the runtime so that you can re really specify them properly. Okay, so the milestone for this coming week number three will be as follows. So you're going to complete lab number one. So hopefully you're just getting, uh, you have dive into it and please just finish in time. And then you're going to complete your quiz number two based on the previous week's uh, materials. And we're going to have uh, Q and A sessions as usual on Mondays and Tuesday. Please take advantage of that if you've got questions. And then you're also going to start with uh, with a lecture lecture series W3, which is about exactly what I just talked about. You will see exactly how these topics will build up to each other. And then looking forward to week number four, not this week, but the next week, you will actually be released lab number two. And lab number two is going to be built on the lecture materials for week number uh, three, four, and potentially five as well. So we'll you will have to make sure you pay attention to the details in the lectures while you're finishing lab number one. Don't ignore one or the other. Okay, so that's about it. So uh, that's about what you're gonna do for this week. It's a lighter lecture load, but it doesn't really mean the importance of the topics are less. No, not the case, okay? So please uh, digest the materials properly and speak to me earlier uh, if you got any issues about understanding. Okay, off you go and happy studying.